Hey everyone, this video is about the TI-68 scientific calculator that Texas Instruments brought to the market in 1989. And uh, there was a second revision of this device released in 1991, which I'll demo today, uh, that was cheaper to produce, uh, and it was eventually discontinued in 1999. It was a popular calculator at the time, and has an interesting mix of features and design decisions. It was made at a time that there was a lot of innovation happening in the calculator market and as we'll see there are some interesting new innovations on the 68 as well as some missing features too. So physically this later revision is all plastic whereas the first version had a metal bezel. As you can see it shares the same design language as this TI-30, a more basic scientific calculator released in 1987 and also this BA2+, uh, the 68's companion, an advanced device for business. And I love the minimalist utilitarian sign and colours used in this generation of Texas Instruments calculators, and the 68 in particular. Uh, the display of the 68 is uh, recessed and subtly sloping, and the slope screen was a prominent feature of its predecessor, the TI-60. Uh, and it has a 12-character LCD display, with each character a 5x7 dot matrix. And this particular example uh, has one column of dead uh, pixels, and this is a common issue with the 68, as well as TI's early graphing calculators. And it can be difficult now to find examples of 68s with uh, perfect screens. And the displays disports uh, digits and uppercase alphabetic characters as well as various symbols. And the keyboard of the 68 is well designed uh, and the springy keys are quite satisfying to use. Uh, the keyboard is color coded into two sections uh, and the numeric keypad is in grey and function keys in black. But the most remarkable feature of the 68 are all its shift keys. Uh, so there are uh, two uh, primary shift keys uh, for second and third functions, uh, but there's also an alpha key uh, for alphabetic characters and an inverse key. And this level of key overloading is reminiscent of the HP 64, uh, the 34C, or even the WP 34S. Uh, but somehow with all these keyboard labels, uh, they're still uh, managed to be easily readable. And although it can sometimes take some scanning of the keyboard to find the function that you're looking for. This was the era that TI started moving away from its own processors for its calculators. Uh, so the 68 uses a Toshiba T9948A CPU that is a reasonable amount of RAM for its time, supporting 55 storage registers or 444 uh, formula programming steps. And this unit was assembled at a facility in Italy. And TI, even in 1989, had a long history of manufacturing and assembling electronics uh, in Europe, as well as the US and Japan. And it was only 10 years later that it started to shift production of components to Mexico, South Korea, and Malaysia. And the 68 uh, comes with a uh, protective cover that includes a reference card uh, that slides into the groove on the calculator. And uh, even with the cover on, the calculator is still quite pocketable. And the TI-68 is the first TI calculator uh, that supported the equation operating system rather than the previous arithmetic operating system. And with the EOS, uh, you can edit and enter a full arithmetic uh, formula. So say if I, I can enter 2 plus 3 times 4, uh, and I can view the whole expression, um, then I can hit equals. Uh, and if I hit the yellow shift and enter, I can go back and edit that equation uh, and re-evaluate. And uh, with the OS, uh, you can call function, so uh, say cos. Uh, and uh, with longer expressions, the screen uh, will scroll automatically as needed, and uh, the display shows uh, left and right arrows uh, to indicate which direction of scroll is supported. Uh, with the 68, you can also chain calculations uh, by hitting an arithmetic key, uh, and uh, you can also uh, refer to the previous answer uh, using the answer key. 
Uh, and with the full alpha keyboards, uh, you can store va values to variables with one, two, or three uh, letter character names. Uh, so say uh, we can store this value in X uh, by hitting the store key, uh, and then alpha X. Uh, and then I can use that in a, another expression. And that's, interestingly, the TI-68 also supports two levels of precision. Uh, 10 digit and 13 digits, although only 10 digits are displayed. Uh, and so you can switch between these two modes uh, using the uh, shift to 13 key. And the TI-68 has great support for complex numbers. Uh, there's no separate modes or operations for them. They're just integrated uh, with the normal operation. Uh, so for example, I can take uh, the square root of negative 1 and here the result i is represented in polar format. Uh, and we can say add another complex number, so say uh, 2 plus 3i, uh, and we see our result. Uh, and you can toggle uh, the result format uh, to polar using uh, the blue shift uh, and the rp key. Uh, so say if I add 0, I'll see that in uh, polar format. Uh, and uh, many operations support complex arguments, so that includes uh, trig functions, logs, powers, as well as the inverse of those functions. Uh, so I'll switch back to rectangular format, and I can say take the sign of, uh, let's say, i. Uh, and then if I take uh, the inverse sign, I will get i again. And this complex integration is really great, and in some ways better than some modern calculators such as the HP 35S. And the TI-68 has some basic programmer related features, uh, such as support for hex, octal, and binary arithmetic. Again, the integration of these features is really nice. Uh, for example, you can mix numbers uh, with different bases in the same equation. Uh, so for example, I can convert a decimal number into hex uh, using the uh, arrow hex button. Uh, and then I can multiply uh, that number by, say, another number in octal. And the 68 has a root solver for seconds, thirds, or fourth order polynomials where the roots may be real or complex. Uh, so, for example, to find uh, the roots of this equation, uh, we'd hit the uh, poly button, uh, and our order is uh, 2. Uh, and now we can enter uh, our exponents, so there's uh, 25, 12, and 1.69. Uh, and uh, we don't want to review uh, our inputs, uh, so the first solution uh, is a complex one, uh, and same with the second. And uh, the 68 can also solve sets of uh, second through fifth order simultaneous equations uh, using a similar user interface. And again, the system uh, may be real or complex. And so the 68 doesn't support uh, programming in the usual sense. Uh, instead, it supports formula storage and evaluation, uh, but formula cannot include loops, conditionals, or other programming constructs. And the capacity for uh, one formula is uh, 79 operations and digits, uh, but you can use variables from one formula and another. Uh, so to begin the formula, uh, you hit the uh, formula key, and then you enter its name. Uh, so um, I'm going to use my favorite example of the full distance equation uh, that calculates the distance an object falls under gravity in time t. And because I've already defined this, uh, the formula comes up. I can edit it now, uh, or just hit solve. Uh, so um, now I'm prompted uh, for time t, so let's say uh, 10 seconds. And uh, we don't want to review any of our inputs, uh, so the answer is uh, 490 uh, meters. Uh, and there's also a formula management mode. Uh, so if we go hit our formula key again, and then just hit enter, uh, we can scroll forward and back uh, through the formula we've defined. 
Uh, and you can also numerically integrate um, a formula. Uh, and uh, this works through the solve function again. So again, we'll solve our full distance equation. Uh, and now instead of entering uh, a number for t, uh, we'll hit uh, blue shift and dx. Uh, and now we get prompted uh, for a, uh, a low and a high. Uh, so we'll enter, say, 1 for our, our low and uh, 10 for our high. Uh, and uh, we want to take values after each second, uh, so our intervals are 10. Uh, and again, we don't want to review. Uh, and so the answer is uh, 1631.7. I believe the calculator uses the simplex method uh, to approximate the answer. And so the TI-68 packs a lot of functionality into a compact device, and its complex number support is particularly great. With two shift keys, uh, 68 had a lot of handy numeric and uh, metric to imperial conversion functions available as well. It also supported the usual one or two point statistical features, uh, including linear regression. And with the EOS, uh, it was a massive leap forward for the usability of TI calculators, and it really caught it up to its Japanese rivals. Uh, but given there was the HP 42S and Casio, uh, 4500p on the market at the same time it may have been a stretch to describe the TI-68 as a truly advanced scientific calculator. It's probably more appropriate to compare the 68 with the Casio FX 5000F uh, that was released in 1987 or the HP 27S from the Pioneer series. Uh, but both of those uh, actually had more advanced formula functionality such as loops and conditionals. And uh, for TI, it was really a transitional time uh, with EOS, uh, the move to EOS, keystroke programming no longer made uh, as much sense, uh, but TI Basic was yet to be developed, and that would come with the TI-81 graphing calculator a few years later. Victor uh, Toth, on his excellent uh, run-stop uh, key site, speculates that t the TI-68, as well as some earlier models, were purposely constrained in terms of programming functions, and this was to avoid cannibalizing cells of higher-end devices such as the TI-95 ProCalc, uh, which I have a separate video on. And interestingly, after the TI-68, uh, TI released uh, a simplified version in uh, the TI-60X, uh, no doubt aimed at the student market. And in 1992, uh, TI also went on to produce the excellent TI Galaxy 67, uh, a similar landscape formula uh, calculator that supported both formula and keystroke programming. And so I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get notified of new videos.